All right, this is part four of our Sly tutorial speedrun, and we're at Raleigh. We're gonna go poop on some kids. So pretty much the only thing to make note of here is that we're going to be skipping his cutscene after we beat him. So we won't be watching that. There are three different methods for skipping this cutscene, and they're all pretty easy. Two of them are pretty much guaranteed and the fastest method that I'm going to be showing here actually I'm going to be showing the easiest method I guess or one of the easiest methods and I'll just be doing this fight over and then doing the hard method and explaining that but pretty much what you want to know is that for the first three phases it's five hops until he shrinks so there's two three four and five now something to note is that when if you notice here, when I pause the game, like look at Raleigh, you notice that it kind of slows down and then it comes to a halt when the, you pause the game. Uh, during that time, like see if, you, if I swing my cane, you see how the cane kind of travels a little bit still, even though the game's paused? If you hit a boss during that time, then it will consider you have beaten the boss because as soon as you beat a boss like as soon as you de deliver the final blow the game auto saves and you've considered to have beaten the level even before the cutscene even comes up and pretty much if you hit him with your cane during that time when it's moving during the pause screen it'll auto like it'll kill him while the game is paused pretty much and you can just normally just do view map after you get that and you do exit to the hideout which I'll be showing myself doing this on the second fight for this third phase he shrinks once he's landed on five different platforms by the way and this final phase you have to jump over his tongue six times instead of the usual five with everything else anyways that's the second method that I was going to be showing um, the first method, which is pretty much the very, it's the easiest method of all, is that when you load your game, you'll notice that it's going to be having like a transition where like the screen kind of fades to black almost, and during that time you can actually move around and do stuff. And if you beat a boss during that time or collect a key, the game will auto save while you're loading the game. Which is kind of weird, I guess, to think about. But, yeah. Pretty much, you load the game while you're saving it. And when you load the game, it'll send you back to the beginning of this level. But since it's saved during that time, even though you're at the beginning of this level again, you've already beaten the boss, so you can just leave. And you have a pretty wide window for this, like a good second. But I'm going to be showing this method first because this method's used a lot in the run. But yeah, just load your game, beat him during a time, you see in the bottom left corner that you have the mask. That means it auto-saved. There's your symbol that I was talking about to keep note of earlier. That's your cue that the game auto-saved and that you're, you're good. Because there's a few of these cutscene skips where you'll have to load the game kind of early. I mean, ideally you want to load, load as early as you can, so that you don't have to wait as long. Pretty much like in between the loading and whatnot. But yeah, that's your cue to let you know that you got everything's okay. For the second method, I'm going to be hitting with that transitional swing after you pause. And I'll ex you'll see that it'll have the autosave while I'm paused. And pretty much from here, like I said, you just go to view map and you just go straight to the hideout instead of doing that first method. If you did that first method, then you just pause the game right afterwards and just do view map and go straight to your hideout. The third method, which I didn't explain, is if you're doing the route that gets a roll. And that's the other super easy method for this, is just do the final attack here on Raleigh with the dive attack, and you'll roll off the platform into the water. And during that time, since you're drowning in the water, the cutscene won't start, 
so you can pretty much pause any time during that drowning animation which is about you have like two seconds to pause and leave and you pray you have like a one frame window with that first trick so the, uh, those two methods are pretty easy but they're slower this is the fastest method which is a little bit tighter and the timing's different with each boss but for Raleigh it's probably about six frames or so but if you saw there I paused right before the cane hit him and it actually auto saved during that time the game is paused right now but I've beaten him but from here since it auto saved I've beaten the boss so I can just exit to hideout and go on to the next world because the game thinks I've beaten him well I have beaten him but the game considers me to have beaten him anyways as I said the timing is different for that method with each boss for mugshot it's probably about four frames and for Ms. Ruby and for the Panda King it's literally frame perfect you have one frame but thankfully you can do that first pause method that I talked about where you beat them while the game is loading and pretty much turn that one frame trick into a 60 frame trick which is very nice anyways in the next part I'll be covering world 2 and lots of more sequence breaks and tricks to come thanks for watching